I asked ChatGPT two questions. Number one, can stocks falling give you a collateral crisis? And they gave me an answer. Number two, can a collateral crisis force shorts to cover on short positions? And they gave me another answer. I want to go over what ChatGPT just said about a collateral crisis and how this could very soon be unfolding and could lead to shorts covering on short positions. Now, I also want to give you guys an update as to AMC stock and what's happening here on the day. And this continuous pounding that you are seeing, it's not what a lot of people would think. And it's not as bearish as a lot of people would think as well. So I think that can make the upside move a little bit more aggressive when that ultimately does come. Keep in mind, I understand it. AMC stock's been going down six days in a row. That doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, morale isn't exactly in the best place. So I want to kind of set people back to reality or back into a uh, kind of neutral mind frame, hopefully here in this video. But keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor, not a financial planner. I'm not going to be the guy to guarantee anything for you. The stock could go to zero. Stock could go to $100,000 tomorrow. You never, ever will know with certainty. Now, let's get into all of this information. First things first. We talked about this in the last two videos, but things really were not good today, right? Home Depot had bad earnings, retail sales are bad, Fed speakers are going against what the markets are pricing in. Markets are expecting rate cuts. Markets are expecting, you know, the Fed to be a lot more accommodative towards the end of this year. And a lot of the Fed speakers are reiterating that inflation is still 5%. Core measures of inflation are over 5%, well off 2%. The labor market remains to be very resilient and very healthy. This is not really indicative of a Fed that would be cutting rates, right? And even the second guy to Fed, Jerome Powell, said today that the biggest lesson that the Fed learned from the 70s is to don't give up so easily that you have to stay the course to get the job done and if you don't inflation will just come back even higher and you'll be forced to do the same thing over again and all of this is really stuff that the markets are not taking into too much consideration right now at the same time you are seeing record low breath in this market that means that a record small amount of companies are guiding the markets higher. And we talked about this in the last two videos because I think it's very critical that everyone, you know, understands this heading into a potential collateral crisis. The money has already left small and mid cap companies and it continues to do so every single day. And as per the 13F filings that we are seeing, technology, specifically your five to 10 largest technology companies in America, are the place where institutional investors have been putting all of their money. So markets are going higher as the average stocks are going lower. I think that puts a lot of pressure on shorts or, or hedge funds as a whole when those big tech stocks do ultimately come down and they will come down. Or the stocks that are getting beaten down start to recover and they would have to recover a lot because look at this divergence here right you're down here if if small and mid cap stocks were to recover they would have to go like up here like the breadth would have to drastically improve and that would push this market to you know levels that we have not seen since early 2022 nasdaq closer to about 380 and that just seems far off from where we currently are and it looks like the next step is going to be a downside move you have not seen a breath divergence like this in a very very long time and when all of the gains are concentrated in just a few stocks imagine if you took out those few stocks from the nasdaq the nasdaq would be substantially lower right now so that's what begs the question of is that going to be the next move for the nasdaq and the answer is likely yes. And that is what ultimately puts pressure on, on, on shorts, right? That gets you a collateral crisis because not only, you know, are, are, are a lot of stocks doing bad, 
But the stocks that are doing good are the most crowded trades. When those guys do bad, that's where you get the collateral that is crushed. Now with AMC stock, these hedge funds, they're, they're pledging the large tech mega cap mega cap tech stocks as collateral because those are the ones that are safer they give you the highest uh kind of one for one ratio on on collateral right let's say uh hedge fund right they have a portfolio with a bunch of bank stocks or they have a portfolio with apple in it what would you say is is riskier right now obviously the bank stocks so if you were the one needing collateral from a hedge fund, what would you be more willing to take? Clearly the Apple stock. Clearly the Microsoft. You're not going to want to touch the banks too much, but you'll still take that. But you'll say, hey, instead of you having a billion dollar short position and I'll take a billion dollars worth of Apple, maybe you say to that hedge fund, I'm going to need $1.25 billion of Bank of America stock to, to get, be sound protection for this short position. So hedge funds are, are obviously pledging mega cap stocks as collateral. Well, when those mega cap stocks go down, you need more and more collateral leading to shorts, uh, you know, having to cover on short positions if they don't want to pledge more collateral or pledging more collateral, obviously. Now, let's get into what chat... GPT said on a collateral crisis. Question, can stocks fall, can stocks falling give you a collateral crisis? Chat GPT said a collateral crisis typically refers to a situation where the value of assets used as collateral for loans or other financial obligations decreases significantly, leading to potential financial instability. While falling stock prices can have various impacts on the economy and financial markets, they do not inherently lead to a collateral crisis on their own. However, if falling stock prices lead to a bro to a broader market downturn or a severe decline in asset values, it could potentially have cascading effects on financial institutions, particularly those that hold uh, significant amounts of stocks or use them as collateral. Now, what I'll say here to what we just read is you have already seen asset values fall in, in just look anywhere else. You've seen asset values fall, right? Crypto, unless it's Bitcoin, is probably down or ethereum it's probably down stocks unless it's apple google tesla nvidia facebook these other large tech names it's probably down besides few select names here and there so it was kind of saying in the beginning of this that you know just a single stock falling you know is not going to give you a collateral crisis but if everything falls more or less, that can give you a collateral crisis. Now it says, this situation can create stress in the financial system and in extreme cases result in a collateral crisis if it leads to widespread defaults or liquidity issues. And clearly that is happening. There is a big liquidity issue in the breadth of the markets. It's all in those upper end stocks, right? Those five to 10 large players and even some would say the commercial real estate market is uh you know about to see widespread defaults so you're definitely getting some of that already showing through uh now it says it is important to note that overall health and stability of the financial system depends on a variety of factors including that the diversification of quality assets held by in financial institutions the effect the, the effectiveness of risk management practices, regulatory oversight, and the actions taken by central banks and other authorities in response to potential crises. Now, you're not going to get much of a response from the Fed unless shit were to hit the fan in a huge way. You had banks collapsing. Three of the biggest bank failures in American history. And when, what are they talking about? Raising rates. <laughs> we're not even close to talking about cutting rates, as they would say. Now, second question, can a collateral crisis force shorts to cover on short positions? A collateral crisis can potentially impact short positions in a few ways, but it does not necessarily force short sellers to cover their positions. Let's explore a couple scenarios, meaning that if you're a very large institution 
and this uh, collateral crisis happens, stocks lose value, then if you have money or you have more stocks to pledge as collateral, they will more than likely let you do that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get forced to close out of your short positions. That's not necessarily what that means. But you need to place more collateral. If Apple were to fall, let's be dramatic, 50% here, you're going to have to put up 50 to 100% more collateral to cover that, if not more than that. And just a lot of hedge funds are not going to be in that kind of place to do that. So uh, uh, there you have that. And I do want to point out as well, with the collateral crisis situation, um, if shorts or hedge funds, I should say, need capital, short positions have unlimited risk. So when they cover on a short position, they get a lot of capital back. They free a lot of capital or collateral that they were using to fund their short position. So when you get close to seeing those actual margin calls, or if you do see one, it can be a good idea for some shorts to cover on short positions to free up some of that collateral or some of that capital, right? Now it says, number one, margin calls. In a collateral crisis, if the value of the collateral used to secure a short position falls significantly, the broker or lender may issue a margin call. A margin call occurs when the lender requires the short seller to deposit additional funds or securities to maintain the required collateral level. If the short seller fails to meet the margin call, the lender may forcefully close the short position, leading to a short squeeze as the short seller is forced to buy shares to cover their position. Number two, Liquidity constraints. During a collateral crisis, liquidity in the market can dry up, making it challenging for short sellers to find shares to borrow or execute trades to close their positions. In such cases, short sellers may face difficulty in covering their positions and may be compelled to hold on to their short positions until liquidity improves or until they can find a way to exit their positions. It is important to note that the occurrence and impact of a collateral crisis can vary depending on the specific circumstances and the nature of financial markets involved. The behavior of short sellers during a crisis can depend on factors such as their risk tolerance, available liquidity, and market conditions. So based off of these two paragraphs right here, sounds eerily familiar to kind of what we're seeing right now, right? There's a lack of available shares in AMC. There has been for 18 months now. The utilization has been at 100%. And now you're seeing shorts in a really bad place, especially if, you know, these mega cap stocks do start to fall because everything else has already fallen, right? Everything has already fallen. Just look at a PayPal. It's down 80% from its highs. Microsoft is hitting a new 52-week high and close to all-time highs. Apple, close to all-time highs. Uh, NVIDIA, close to all-time highs, right? And that story continues on with a couple other names, guys. So pretty eye-opening, I hope, for a lot of people to see what is what ChatGPT is, is saying. Now, I want to talk about what's actually happening here on the day today. It's all in the option activity, right? AMC stock right now, if you look at the volume for the day, is at about 7 million shares that are trading hands. Very, very low volume day. But if you look at the option activity, huge option orders. We're just going to look at the $10 puts. A lot of these are for July 21st, as well as the June 21st and the June 16th expiration. We're just going to run through the numbers here, right? These are all $10 puts that I'm going to say. Half a million dollar trade, $1.5 million trade, $1.33 million trade, uh, $761,000 trade, $2.5 million trade, $3.5 million trade, $2.5 million trade, another million dollar trade, $3 million, $3.3 million, $1 million, $3 million, $2.7 million, $600,000. And then you get into yesterday. So if you add up some of these large trades, you do 5,000 contracts there. You're looking at 11,000 contracts, 13,000 contracts. If you look at these, add another 11,000, you're at 24,000, 25,000, 26,000, um, another 3,000, call it 30,000 contracts right there. Another 6,000, you're at 36,000 contracts. 
40,000 contracts, uh, 44,000 contracts, uh, 47,000 contracts, call it 48,000 contracts at the $10 put that has been purchased today. If we go to the calculator, oh, it's super laggy. And do that. Just call it 45,000 contracts times 100 shares. That's 4.5 million shares that have to be shorted here today alone or or even half of that amount, right? Because market makers, when they are backing puts that are this far in the money, the break-evens are very close, and they almost instantly have to go and hedge out that risk because if they don't, they're going to lose money. If the shorts make money buying these puts, the market makers are going to lose money selling these puts. So they have to go out and short the stock in order to hedge out their risk. So call it 2.5 million shares, call it 4.5 million shares. When you look at the relative volume on the day at 7 million shares, any one of those numbers, even a million shares, is a lot. But what it ultimately does is it hides the short interest as well. So not only do hedge funds get to push down the price of AMC and to suppress the price of AMC, they also get to short AMC, right? They get the short interest much higher, but it's not captured because market makers don't report short interest, right? Because it's very fluid. So that's what is really happening with AMC right now. It's not like people are going out and selling out. It's nothing to do with that. It's low volume and high demand for puts that are in the money. These are not bearish bets, by the way. Well, they're not ultra bearish bets. Sure, they're bearish because they're buying puts, but they're deep in the money. You know, that's that's not expecting a huge drop in AMC stock. You're seeing very few like $3 or $4 puts that are actually out of the money that can make you you know, hundreds or thousands of percent, right? You're not really getting a lot of that huge bearish activity. So I think it's important context, right? It's all artificial. It's, it's, it's it has nothing to do with anything else. They want to push down AMC stock. They want to crush your morale. And that's the bottom line to it. Now, AMC short score at 89, 667 and a half million dollars worth of short positions in AMC. Estimated short interest of free flow at 25%. Free flow out on loan at 32.37%. Shares out on loan 167.15 million. Days to cover at 5.15. And cost to borrow three month trailing average at 128%. Cost to borrow max 356.8% here on the day. Cost to borrow average 200 or uh, 130 23.81% cost of our minimum last we knew was about 115% yesterday currently 150,000 shares available with a cost of our fee of about 72 and a half percent ladies and gentlemen that is going to do it here in this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section you guys have a great rest of your day if you guys also want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the description of this video as well you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.